from the Lord tonight. And I know the Lord has impressed this upon my heart. Um, because, oh, I just got it. I just got it. You know, again, I, I, God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? So many different things, you know, can float around in your head, but God, what is the word for tonight? And so I begin to think about, um, evangelist Joyce Rogers. Um, for those who do not know evangelist Joyce Rogers, she was an evangelist in the church that I am a member of. She was an evangelist in the church of God in Christ. And she, um, rose to, you know, the top leadership tier of the Church of God in Christ as our international chair lady. And a chair lady is likened to um, a youth pastor. So she was the female youth pastor in the Church of God in Christ. She was the female youth pastor in the Church of God in Christ. And what makes her so amazing and so unique and, 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 and just stands out, you know, stands tall. I mean, she was in a lane all by herself. What made her stand out so is she served as the female youth pastor, the female youth leader, um, the, 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 the chair lady of the international chair lady of the 6 million, uh, people church member church. She was that female voice for the young people for over 20 years. For over 20 years. And, um, you know, she, she was such a youthful, um, woman in spirit, man. She stayed so re relevant to what young people were going through. And, you know, she was so approachable and so down to earth. And she was, she was anointed and, 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 and you could not deny that God's hand was on her life. Well, she passed away you know, unexpectedly to, to many of us. Um, I believe it was last week. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's been a week yet, but a few days ago and it just shook, um, our church and it has shaken, you know, those that knew her in the body of Christ, it, it has really shaken, shaken us because she was one of the good ones. She was one that was so impactful. She lived man, a life, full of purpose. And she was always, uh, making sure that she was on purpose. Her ministry's name was primary purpose. And so she was all about doing what God had called her to do. And she did it up to her last breath, her last message to, um, to the world. You know, um, she posted on social media, only what you do for Christ is going to last. Everything else will fade away, but only what you do for Christ will last. She tweeted that. And then the next morning she was gone. So even in her dying, you know, dying hours in her transitioning hours, she still walked in the assignment and fulfilled the mandate of God that was on her life. And man, as I begin to ponder and begin to, I've been, I've taken this, this, um, this passing very seriously, you know, and, and, and there's a, there's a, 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 a weight I feel from this that I really can't put into articulation, but I do understand why I feel the weight. And so I, my prayer has just been God, I do not want to leave this earth without fulfilling the purposes and walking in the, uh, uh, the, the plan and in the steps that you have ordained for me to walk in. I don't want to die. And, 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 and people say, man, she had so much potential, man. She could have did this man. There were so many lives that she could have touched, man. There were so many people that she failed to minister to man. There was so much, uh, 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 gifts that she never even allowed to come forth in her. There was so much money that she could have made because of what the Lord deposited into her. I never want that to be said about me. I always want it to be said that that girl, though she's gone, she did everything that God called her to do. And it is evident in the fruit that still remains. 
So evangelist, chair lady, Mother Rogers, she held many titles in the church of God in Christ. The, the, the fruit that she walked in purpose is, is all the lives that are testifying of her impact. Her homegoing service is going to be coming up next week. And they had to have it at the Potter's house because there are so many people that want to pay respects to her and give tribute to her life because she touched lives personally. One person touched thousands upon thousands. Many were one to the Lord by one person because she embraced her purpose. She walked in it boldly, unapologetically, and, and, and she walked in it with such joy. It was not a burden for her. It was not a drudgery for her to be called by God. You, you, when you looked at her, you knew that she, she loved what she was called to do. This is what she was born to do. And it's very evident when a person is not in purpose, they're miserable. Think about how many of us work jobs that we don't like. We're frustrated and that frustration translates into our personal life. We're mad at the kids. We're mad at the husband. We go off on the neighbors. We don't want to speak to the teller at the grocery store because we're so frustrated. The root of the problem is because we're not fulfilling purpose. And I teach this in my master class. I wish I could see you all Facebook in the comments. I can't see you all, but just I'm I'm praying that you all are getting this word on tonight. Um I I share this in my classes that I teach. I teach about purpose. And and so there's so many books out about purpose and living a purpose driven life and and really finding what you're called to do and, and and what is my niche you know what was I born to do and I tell them the simple definition of purpose the simple definition of passion because passion and purpose are linked together whatever you're passionate about is what you've been purposed to do. How do you know if you're passionate about it? How do you know that that's your purpose? Because you will do it without being compensated. Evangelist Rogers will preach the gospel, will give a word of encouragement, will minister to people everywhere, not just young people, but she was, she will minister to anybody, whether she was compensated or not, because that's what she was born to do. If I never receive an offering, if I never receive accolades, right? If I, if I, if I, if people never acknowledge who I am, I'm going to do this until the day I die because this is what brings me joy. The moment I stop doing this is the moment, glory to God, the moment I die spiritually. It ain't so much physically, but my, 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 that I, I'm walking around looking like I have life, but I'm lifeless on the inside if I can't do what I was born to do. So whatever I'm willing to do without having to receive money for it, without having to be acknowledged for it, without having to be compensated for it, that's my passion. You love to cook without people asking you to do it. That's your passion. You love young people and no one has to uh, pump you to do it, encourage you to do it. That's your passion. You love makeup. You love fashion. You love hair. You love uh, cutting, uh, being a barber. You love driving trucks. That's what you're called to do. When you're not in purpose, guess what? You're not bringing God glory. Anytime you're not doing what you were created to do, it brings shame to the manufacturer. Somebody say talk, Siobhan. I wish I could see you all talking back to me. I don't see nothing. Instagram, I see you. Talk for Facebook because they want to say something, but I can't see it. They got these stars again and the stars are taking away my comments, but I won't get frustrated. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to give you all this word. And so what was I saying? Manufacturer, when you do not produce what you were created to produce, you bring shame to the manufacturer. And if you don't function the way the manufacturer created for you to function or the thing, if it doesn't function, guess what? 
we have no use for you. This fan was created to do what? Cool people off when they get hot. If I push this button and I know I already got charged up batteries and I push this button and the fan don't work, I don't have a need for it. So what happens? I throw it away because the fan is not fulfilling the purpose that it was created or intended to fulfill. How many of us have been placed to the side because we're not walking in what God has called us to walk in? You've been called to be an inspirer. You've been called to be an author and you've chosen to go into the salon. And you wonder why all the, the, the frontals is all the way back here and the braids is untwisted as soon as they leave the salon because that ain't what you was called to do. You don't went to Bible school and you're supposed to be building computers. So you done jacked up the man's edge up because that ain't what you called to do. You was leading yourself instead of Really asking God, God, what is going to bring you maximum glory? Many. It's trendy now, y'all, to be a preacher. It's trendy now to be a motivational speaker. It's trendy now to have a prayer call. It's trendy now to have a ministry. You got to love people. You need to know how to talk. That ain't what you called to do. What are you good at? What's bringing God maximum glory? Ask yourself, am I really bringing God glory out of my life? I'm not trying to kill your dreams, but sometimes our dreams are not in alignment with what God has ordained. And guess what? God ain't going to bless what he hasn't ordained. He's not obligated to do it. So that's why when you start a church, it's only five people still there after five years. People ain't going to tell you all the truth. They're not going to tell you. But you need to hear it. When there's a grace on you for something, that means there's an ability that God places on you that other people don't have the ability to do. Am I talking to somebody tonight? So you, a guy has called me to start a church and it's the same five people that you had when you started and we're five years out. That ain't your purpose. That ain't what you're called to do. It has to bring God maximum glory. What happens when we are not producing? God will put us to the side. I don't want to look the part. I don't want to sound the part. I don't want to brand and do all these things. And guess what? I'm not bringing God glory because now when there's inspection time, when there's evaluation time, guess what? There's no fruit. Let's go. Mark the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter. Y'all not mad, are you? You know, sometimes in church, the pastor preaches messages that steps on your toes. Every message ain't always going to be an encouraging message. Every message ain't always going to be a feel-good message. There are some messages that come to shake you from where you are. There are some messages that come to speak to that spirit man to give you the truth. It's the truth that makes us free. So tonight's word is not a run around the church shouting word. I'm sorry. All right. I want, to, I want you all to see something. I want you all to see something. Let's go. Mark the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter. Let's start at the 12th verse. Somebody type for me. Mark the 11th chapter, 12th verse. I pray y'all are typing for me on Facebook. If you have not shared it, it's not too late. It's not too late. I do see y'all faces a little bit and little circles going across the screen. So I am waving and blowing you all kisses. I don't see who's on, but I see some faces. Mwah! All right, get your Bibles. Mark the 11th chapter. 
Mark the 11th chapter. Let's go at to the 12th verse. I want you all to see something. I want you all to see how, how, how passionate Jesus is about purpose being fulfilled. I want you all to see how passionate Jesus is about us doing what we were created to do. Mark 11, 12. Somebody say we need fruit. We need fruit. We need fruit. We need fruit. I don't want to just be a leafy tree. I don't want to just be a leafy tree. Thank you for the seed, Regina. I receive it. I don't want to be a leafy tree. Just leaves no fruit. Because guess what that means? It's a dead tree. And many of us have the leaves, but honestly, we are dead because we're not producing what we're supposed to produce. We need fruit. God, I want fruit to be produced out of my life. I don't want to be deceived by just leaves, nor do I want to deceive people by just my outside appearance. But I want to produce. There needs to be fruit. That, that comes forth from my life. All right. Verse 12. And on tomorrow. When they were come from Bethany. When Jesus leaves. Now it's the next day. They're leaving Bethany. The Bible says in verse 12. That Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. And he saw a fig tree from afar off. And when he looked at this tree, he saw that this tree had leaves. And he came to this tree happy because he thought that he would find some fruit on the tree. And when he came to it, the Bible says what? He found nothing but leaves. Somebody say nothing but leaves. Nothing but leaves. It looked so fruitful from a distance. It looked like it was doing work from a distance. The busyness looked as though they were producing. It looked as though they were fulfilling purpose. The numbers and the likes. It looked as though they were fulfilling purpose. I received the seed. Nikita, thank you. The building, it looked good. The leaves looked so good from a distance. And when he came up on the tree, when he got closer and he was able to inspect the tree and he was able to evaluate the tree, the Bible says that there was nothing but leaves. And I'm sorry to say, but that's where many of us are in the body of Christ. That's where many of us are in Christendom. We are nothing but leaves. And I want you all to know that if it's leaves, it means that the tree is dead. Don't you get comfortable with just leaves. Don't you be deceived by just leaves. Don't you be comfortable with just the look. Busy, busy work, doing this, doing that, here, there, everywhere, but not giving God any glory out of your life. You are a leafy tree. Leafy tree. No fruit. No fruit. We need fruit. We need fruit. And the, so he's hungry. And he grow, he's happy. He's looking for somebody to be to, 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 to be used. He wants to use somebody for a service. Let's look at it that way. He sees us from a distance. And we look like we're doing it. We look like we're bringing glory to him. We talk like we're bringing glory to him. We act like we're bringing glory to him. And then with the <coughs> magnifying glass. It's shown down on who we really are and what we're really about. 
and where our motive really is. The truth reveals that ain't no fruit there. He says that he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not come. And Jesus answered and he spoke to the tree and he says from this day forward, no man will eat from this tree. And the disciples heard it. Thank you for the seed, Barbara. Thank you. I love you, sis. You sow it to me every week. Thank you. Thank you. He cursed the tree and he did it so the disciples could hear it because he's trying to teach them something by using this tree. He's trying to show them the importance of producing and really walking in what they were called to walk in. It just ain't good enough for you all to have the look. It ain't just good enough for you all to say that we walk with Jesus, that we're close to Jesus, that, 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 that we're the ones that's a part of his inner circle. But I want you all to see what I do with those and what I do with, 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 with things that don't do what I called it to do. I curse it. What so, uh, uh, why? why? Why was Jesus so, so bothered by this tree? Why was he so adamant about cursing the tree and saying that nobody from this day forward will ever eat from this tree again? What, what was it? First of all, the fig tree is to produce figs. That's the purpose of the tree. Whenever you saw leaves, even though, catch this, it was not fig season. It was not fig season. This going to bless some of y'all. It was not time for the full fig to be produced yet. But the leaf was supposed to be an indicator that the fig was coming. So the leaves indicated that it was pre-figs on the tree. So wherever you saw the uh, leaves, you saw the nubs of figs, and that's what travelers would eat when they were on their journeys. So it wasn't even about them having to be in full bloom. That's a word for some of y'all that keep making excuses and you're saying, I'm just waiting until, you know, I get all my stuff together. Huh? I, this for y'all that keep making excuses. Some of y'all should sew on that word because I'm stepping on your toes right now because you keep making excuses and saying, I'm not going to launch out yet until I get all the money I need. I, 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 I'm not going, I'm not going to do it all yet until, you know, I really get all the, the help I need. I'm not going, I heard the Lord, but I'm not going to produce. I'm not going to walk out what he called me to do until I feel like I'm ready until I get all the confidence I need to get until I get all the support I have to get. If I waited on support to do the things that God called me to do, I will not produce fruit. All Jesus wanted was some of the little nubs. He wanted some of the prefix. He didn't even want the, 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 the big ones. He just wanted the little ones that look like grapes. And I walk up on this tree and you mean to tell me you don't even have the little figs on the tree? You're useless. You're, 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 you're fruitless. You're unproductive. You're taking up space. You have betrayed and deceived me. I was happy about what I saw from a distance. Here's a word. I was happy about it because you were getting ready to meet a need in my life. And then when I walk up on you, I'm disappointed because I was deceived because you looked apart, you looked real, and you were artificial. I hate going to restaurants. And they bring all that pretty, pretty dessert. I believe they got it at Houston's and they have it, I think, at J. Alexander's. 
And they bring out this tray with all these different arrays of desserts. And, and I'm ready to take the dessert off the tray. And I remember one time wanting a piece of the cake off of the tray. And when I went to pull it off the tray, I said, oh, that looks delicious. I want that slice. And she said, this looks real, but this is artificial. My mouth was watering for the real slice. And I was deceived because it had, y'all ain't saying amen. It had the look. It looked like it was real. It looked like it was the, 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 the authentic thing. And it's fake. It looks real. But it's fake. Don't be deceived by the leaves. Leaves say it's a dead tree. Many of us, we're not fulfilling purpose and we're connected to leaves. We're connected to ministries that are just leaves. We are members of churches that are just leaves. No fruit. No fruit, no figs. And the Bible says that when he walked up on it and saw nothing but leaves, he cursed the tree because it did not produce what it was created to produce. What was the purpose of that? Oh, there was always a method. There was always a lesson that Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. If you are going to be like me, I need you all to, to, to not get so stuck in a look. I don't want you to look religious on the outside. And then you are spiritually dead on the inside. Now, come on, let me show you something. They leave from this tree. And now look at verse 15. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? They came to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple. The temple is beautiful, y'all. This is the place where they were worshiping. This is the place where they were offering sacrifices to God. He leaves from cursing the fig tree and now they're entering in to the temple. And when he walks into the temple, what does he do? He casts out those that were selling in the temple. He threw over tables and all of those who exchange money in exchange for animals. He threw the tables over. He threw those that use the temple for personal gain. It looked good on the outside. And when he walked in, he saw that it was just leaves and it angered him. And he was trying to show the disciples the importance, glory to God, of being who you're supposed to be. The Bible says that he threw him out and he would not allow anyone that should carry any vessel through the temple. He cleaned the temple out and he taught the disciples right at that moment. And he said, let me let you all be very clear on what the purpose of the temple is supposed to be. Because clearly man have came in and tainted the purpose. Man have came in and took the glory away from my father and brought glory to themselves. That's how you know it's a leafy tree. When you try to bring the glory to you and not to God. He said, my house. Let me make sure it's clear. My house shall be called the nation of prayer. Don't you all know that? And you all have made it a place, a den of thieves. 
You are robbing me of my glory. Anytime you don't walk in what you've been called to walk in, you are robbing God of his glory. And God is not going to allow us to be glory stealers. Hallelujah. 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 God will not allow us to steal his glory any longer. By doing what we want to do and not what he's called us to do. Don't you all know the purpose? The purpose of this house is to bring glory to God. The purpose of this house was for you guys to come together and seek me in prayer. Instead, you're in here using it for your benefit. The purpose of the tree was for the tree to bring forth figs. And you're just here looking pretty on the outside and you're not producing. And the scribes and the chiefs priests heard it. The religious heard it and they sought how they might destroy him for they feared him because all the people were astonished at this doctrine. And now the religious people and those that didn't mind glory to God, the, the, the temple being used for personal gain because they were benefiting. There are many of you, people don't want you to walk in what you're called to walk in because they're benefiting from you just being status quo. They're benefiting from you not walking in your purpose, but doing what they're supposed to do and you're helping them fulfill theirs and you're not walking in yours. And now somebody comes and gives the truth and lets you know that you are pretty much walking in circles. You are just uh, 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 wasting time. You, 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 you're out of alignment. And now the Bible says that they're mad with Jesus. You want to know why some of you have uh, the enemy behind you all's back and fighting you so much? Because you're one that brings truth. You're one that calls people into purpose. You're the one that calls people into alignment. And people who like chaos can't stand order. People who are all over the place don't like order. They don't like staying in a lane. They love to switch lanes. I don't like driving around people that like switching lanes. You're dangerous. Get away from me. Whenever people start driving and switching lanes like that, I tell them, you go ahead. You go ahead. Because what you're not going to do is get me in an accident because you can't stay in your lane. They honk at a horn. I'm in New Jersey now and they drive like I don't know what. And they be behind me just, uh, uh, uh. you're not going to push me to drive any faster. Go ahead. I'm staying in my lane. I'm fulfilling purpose. And what you're not going to do is try to force me and strong arm me and road rage me, road rage, 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 rage me to be in a lane that I'm not going to fulfill purpose in. I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. That was a revelation. I'm going this way. So you're not going to move me out this lane because you want to go faster. Go around. I'm staying here. They saw his life because he's challenging their system. He's, he's calling them into order. And he's letting them know again that our purpose our mission only is to bring glory to God. And when the evening was come, the Bible says that he went out of the city. He gave the lesson. He cursed the tree. He showed the disciples the importance of of walking in what they're called to walk in and not compromising and not trying to go along with what everybody else is doing. I want you to see the danger of that. And now he leaves the city. Here's some good news for you. Here's some good news for you because he don't wish that any of us would perish. It's God's desire for us to do what we've been called to do. So he sends a word like this for us to get in place. 
for us to really start getting in position and for those who are in place, for those who are in position, fulfill your purpose. Do what you've been created to do. Don't bring shame to the manufacturer. Here's some good news for you. And when they leave, the Bible says, verse 20, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the same fig tree that Jesus cursed. And they saw that fig tree dried up from the root. Many of you right now, because you kept telling God no. And because you kept saying, God, pick somebody else. And because you kept saying, God, I ain't qualified. And because you kept saying, God, I'm unworthy. And because you kept saying, but God, I messed up. And because you kept saying, but God, I made some bad mistakes. I'm giving all the excuses that you make. Oh God, I had kids out of wedlock. Oh God, I said some bad things. Oh God, I did some things that are just, you know, damnable. I, I shouldn't, I'm not even worthy to even come seek your face. Don't, don't use me. Use somebody else. I, I don't have the background. I, oh God, they, 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 they got the degrees. Oh God, they got the money. Oh God, they're the right color. Oh, you'll be giving God all these excuses. As to why we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And we over in a corner dried up. We're dried up. Because the longer you are unproductive, the more stale and stiff you get. And eventually you dry up. The gift dries up. You'll use your voice. Eventually it dries up. You'll use your gift and walk in that, that, that thing that God has called you to do consistently. You become rusty. Oh, I love this practical teaching. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you don't, you don't really stay up on what God has given you to do. You don't even, you, 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 you start to lose your momentum. You dry up. You dry up. Bible says that it was dried up from the root. And Peter calling to remember, I see you not Warren. And Peter calling to remember said, Jesus, Jesus, look at the fig tree that you cursed. Look, it's, it's withering away. It's withering away. And Jesus said to him, and he said it to all the disciples, have faith in God. Here's some restoration for somebody that's dried up. I'm going to pray for you tonight. He said, that verse 23, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. The same Jesus that cursed the tree is now the same Jesus that's given them another lesson. I cursed it, but if you speak to it, God can restore. Speak to what looks dead. <laughs> Command it to live. Speak to what seems an, as an obstacle and command that obstacle to now be removed. Speak to that hard thing and command it to now become easy. Speak to that one that's dried up and command them now to begin to be fruitful. Command them now to get up from where they are. One of the babies from, from a new G preached yesterday is in the getting up. It's in the getting up. Regina, one of my girls, she preached yesterday, it's in the getting up. Yeah, many of us go down, many of us stay down, but I want you to know it's in your getting up. He said, if you have the faith to speak to the mountain and to command that mountain to be removed and cast in the sea, and if you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe, guess what? Those things which you say will come to pass and you will have whatsoever you saith. That's some good news. Somebody say, that's some good news. That's some good news. You ain't got to stay dry. You ain't got to stay dead. You ain't got to stay as a leaf with no fruit. You don't have to stay just having a look, being a tomb but having dead bodies on the inside, he told them, you're likened to the, to the church. You're likened to those tombs that are beautiful. They're whitewashed on the outside, but they got dead man's bones on the inside. You ain't got to stay there. 
If you believe in your heart that that mountain can be removed and you cast it in the sea, you will have what you declare. Hallelujah. I believe that there are some of you tonight that will be honest to say, I'm not walking in purpose. I do feel dry. My dream has dried up. The vision that God has given to me has dried up. It's withered. I believe that God had put me on the shelf because I kept saying no. But God, I'm ready. God, you can use me. I'm ready now to write. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to build it. I'm ready to say it. I I, I was nervous. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel qualified. But I know what I'm called to do. I can't stop dreaming about it. Confirmation keeps coming after confirmation. I keep trying to do it my way, but God, I will surrender to what you've created me to do. No longer will I bring, bring shame to the manufacturer. No longer will I bring shame to you by not doing what you've called me to do. I will not keep making excuses. Thank you, Paulette, for the seed. I'm dried up. My songs are dry. My, 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 I got writer's block. I, I, I don't even know where to start at again. I, I, I don't even know what words to use. I don't even know how to go about doing it. God, I, I, I need you to awaken me again. Restore me again. Revive that passion and burden back on the inside of me again. Take me back to that, to that hunger and thirst where I so wanted to be in your will. Where I, 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 I desire to be in your perfect will. Take me back to that place. I don't want to be a tree with just leaves. I want to produce. I want to fulfill the purposes that you've called me to fulfill so that when I leave here, there will be fruit that will remain. Anybody in agreement? Anybody receive this word tonight? You need fruit. You need fruit. Don't you get comfortable with just having a look? You look like you're walking in purpose, working in purpose because you getting up every day and you and you going to a job. That don't mean you doing what God calls you to do. You getting up every day and you got your same routine. That don't mean that's giving God glory. If that ain't what He wants you to do, you want to bear fruit, fruit that will remain. You want when Jesus if Jesus is looking to see who He can use. And he gets happy because he sees us from a distance that when he walks up on us, he says, they got it for real. They got it for real. They got it for real. It ain't just a look. It's not just a sound. It's not just a uh, something that they was groomed to become. It's not just something they're walking out to appease man. This is what they were called to do because they are doing what I have ordained. God, I thank you tonight. As I'm praying, come on, you're sowing. As I'm praying, you're sowing. You're saying, I received this word. I received this word. I'm getting ready to bring forth fruit. I will not be just a leafy tree. I will not be just a leafy tree. Come on, get that seed in your hand. Whatever God is laying upon your heart to sow, you sow it now. God, I thank you. For these, your sons and daughters that you've drawn to this cyber church tonight because you are commanding them. You are calling them into purpose. No more delay. No more excuses. No more walking in things that's not bringing you glory. But I thank you, oh God, that today they align with your will. Tonight they align with your your plans tonight they come into oneness with your intentions hallelujah there will no longer be a war with their will against your will but they come into alignment they come into oneness that their will now God becomes your will I thank you oh God that your will is what we want for our lives God forgive us if we've not walked, God, in what you have called us and created us to walk in, God, forgive us 
Glory to God if we've sat on the gifts and the talents that we know you've invested on the inside of us. God, forgive us if we have tried to put what you've called us to do on somebody else, God. God, forgive us for saying no. Forgive us for bringing shame to you as our creator, as our manufacturer, as our potter. God, I thank you that we are pliable. I thank you that we are flexible and we are willing to be used however you desire to use us. God, our desire is to bring forth fruit. We don't want to be put on the shelf. We don't want to be put on the side. We don't want you to have to curse our lives and find somebody else to do what we know we were supposed to do. So we say, Lord, here we are. You can use our lives. You can use us for your glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will stop trying to do it my way. I'll stop making up my own jobs. Stop trying to make up and do my own thing. But I will do that which I know you've called me to do, God. I bless you for this lesson tonight. Because there are many, there are many that are dried up because they are not walking in who they're really supposed to be. I thank you, O God, that this word has unctioned them and it has launched them back into position. May they never be removed. May they never get out of that lane. May they never be pulled into areas and into assignments and into doors and into places that you have not will for their lives. I pray God that they'll release their energies. They'll release their gifts. They'll release their talents. They'll release their monies where you want them to release it at because where you've ordained it is where it's going to be blessed. Glory to God. Where you've sanctified it is where we're going to see fruit. Glory to God. Where you've spoken it is where your favor is going to be released. And I thank you, oh God, that these here are getting ready to be released in favor. Hallelujah. Because they're walking in purpose. I thank you, oh God, for the opportunities that are getting ready to come because they're walking in purpose. I thank you for the doors that are getting ready to open for these because they're walking in your purpose. I thank you, God, for the resources that are getting ready to be yielded to them and given to them because they're walking in what you've ordained for them to walk in. I bless you for every man on this line. I bless you for every woman on this line. I thank you for those that have heard this word and have received the word gladly. I thank you for everyone that has sown into the word, God. I pray that you'll bless them. They've sown because they receive it. They've sown because they've endorsed and they've said that this word has spoken directly to me and because my heart is with the word, here is my treasure. Honor them tonight, God. Honor them tonight, God, and let them know that they've sown it in purpose. And that that seed, glory to God, is unlocking opportunities for them to fulfill even greater purpose from this night forward. I give you glory. I thank you. And we bless your name for another night of Cyber Church where we're able to share your heart. I don't take it for granted, God. I don't take it lightly. But I say thank you. I bless you. I love you and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I love you all so much. If you have not shared it, please share it. If you want to listen to it again, it will be back on again tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those that need to hear the word, give them a call and say, don't forget to tune in to Cyber Church at 10 p.m. We want to do it again at 10 because many miss at 7. And I want to make sure that many that need the word can receive the word. I love you all and I'll see you on next week.